Last week, I came across this website and there are two types of people in the world. The first, who would just look at this website and be like, okay, that's a cool site and move on with their life. And the second kind, which is like me, who look at this website and the first thought I had was, how hard could it be to recreate it? And that's exactly the question I'm going to try and answer today. From my experience coding for a lot of years, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be as simple as we think it is. So let's find out. This website looks absolutely insane and there's so much we could do. So I really need to narrow down my focus for the sake of this video. And I'm going to try and recreate this homepage element so this section, which is basically his face moving up and down as you move the mouse. And also as I move the mouse, the helmet patterns change and it moves according to my cursor. And also the background is moving, as you can see. And I'm going to need all the help possible. So I'm going to open up Chat LLM, who are also the sponsors of this video. Out of all of the models that they offer, I think for this case, I'm going to use their clots on 4.5. The first step is going to be to plan. So I'm going to first figure out what is the laziest way that I can recreate his website. I'm hoping to be able to copy out all of the HTML CSS. I'm going to use the microphone mode instead of typing it out because I just find it so much easier. Okay, the first option is browser dev tools, which is the laziest mode where I just copy paste all of the HTML and the index files as well. So this is what I was thinking of, but maybe there's a faster way for me to do that. We know where to start. I'm going to use this command, run it on my terminal and try to copy paste his exact website. Try to run it locally. Yeah, I remember when I was an idiot and I said that we could probably just copy the files. That's clearly not what we can do. So I did try to clone everything. And of course, as expected, I tried to run the index file on the browser directly, the easiest way. It was obviously not going to work the first time around because the first error we got was 4.3 from the server. So that's essentially they're giving us a forbidden error for the external JavaScript, which makes total sense why they would want to protect that. And it probably just allows requests that come only from landonorris.com server and the block requests that come from any other server. Another problem that I was getting was that these RAI files were not being loaded properly. And even though I copied them over manually, it's still not working because this is supposed to load the animations, but somehow not still loading. I'm going to go back to Claude and try to brainstorm other ways for me to do this in a lazy way. Yes, we hit a blocker, but I feel like this will go somewhere. A few moments later. Oh my God, it actually works. Let me explain to you guys how I fixed it. I did start off by mirroring the site with wget, but this only ended up getting the HTML and the CSS. While it was good enough, this particular site actually has a lot of heavy reliance on JavaScript and 3D web. So these were kind of two separate problems I realized. To get all of the JavaScript, I actually had to manually download all of the files. And then when it came to the 3D WebGL, this turned out to be quite a heavy part. There were a bunch of things used. So they basically had decoders, they had 3D models, they had textures, lighting, all of these. And I had to manually fetch them and store them locally for this whole thing to work. But it wasn't too much effort. It was mostly just a lot of looking where's the error, downloading the file, the errors, looking again, what file is erroring and that whole loop again and again. But now we're at the stage where I actually have the entire website running locally. Huh? It was working. What changed? I really should go sleep, but I'm facing this really weird issue. Let me try to explain to you what's happening. So I'm going to refresh my page with the inspect tab open and everything works fine, right? I close it, I refresh again and it seems to work. But once I close the inspect, it stops loading. And then I go back to the console logs and there's errors about failing to load the resources. Super weird, never experienced something like this. I have a feeling this has to do with loading issues. I decided to explain it to the LLM and it actually suggests that it's a caching a timing issue. I do have a, sh a ton of assets in the code, like not even just images, so many different JS files that I have downloaded. So all that could be causing my Chrome to behave really slowly. Hmm, hmm, hmm. 
it's happening in Safari as well. Like the moment I close the inspect tab, it stops loading. Okay, I really need to go sleep. I'm going to come back to this tomorrow morning. And then we're going to try and fix this and figure out what's going on. It's a new day, but the same problem. I'm going to give myself half an hour this morning, try and fix this stupid issue where it only works in the inspect mode. And hopefully we find a solution. If we don't, then I'm going to have to regroup and think of how we proceed next. I fixed it. It works. So the issue was that the moment the screen got wider, it actually needed to load more textures because the animation changes depending on the responsiveness of the website. And there was one package that I was missing and it wasn't loading correctly when the size was a bit larger. So I had to do quite a bit of debugging with that. But eventually we reached a stage where I'm able to load the site locally. And I also tried to remove all of the assets that I don't need from this hero section. So if I try to scroll like I'm trying right now, there's nothing that I see in the rest of the website. Everything is kind of empty. Okay, other than this part, I didn't remove it. So now... I can tweak what we have now to make it look like something that would fit in my portfolio website. The first thing I need is an image. I'm going to use AI to help me generate that. And luckily, Chat LM also allows me to create images. So I'm going to use out of all of the different models that they have. Probably going to use Nana Banana actually. So I'm going to take a photo of myself first. I took a photo with three different angles and I'm going to give it to... Nano Banana along with Lando Norris's image so that it can potentially create an image that looks sort of like his but it's my face on it. I... Now, before using Nano Banana to generate the AI image of myself, I need to create a prompt that I can send to Nano Banana. I'm going to use GPT-5 to help me create it because I think it's pretty good in creating prompts that you can send to other LLMs or other models. It has the finalized prompt. I'm going to copy paste it here in the meanwhile i'm going to try and modify all of the text of this like remove things like his name the site elements the mclaren logo and stuff because i want this to be more like my site so i don't really need all this these are the images generated they look pretty blurry so i've asked it to come up with more ones that are higher resolution technically it did do what we asked it to do it did combine the landon norris image with my images but i want it to look a bit more professional Okay, now it just gave me something that looks nothing like me. I'm going to try and come up with a different prompt to fix this. Okay, so far, I've removed all of the random buttons here. Removed it. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to try and replace his face with mine. Hopefully, it's just an image change, but maybe it's something more than that. I asked it to come up with a funky sweater and it came up with this. I think it looks cool. I'm going to go ahead with this image, but we need to convert it to WebP style, so... Let's open another tab of chat LLM. Now going back to close. What's the fastest way to convert a PNG or JPEG into WebP format? Great, I have it in WebP format now. So I'm going to push this over in my code. It's a moment of truth. I'm going to open an incognito tab. Go to my local host. image appears okay clearly it's not the right fit but the gist is there but there's like this weird overlay on top of my face like some kind of weird dirt effect so the skin looks really dirty it wasn't as simple as just changing the image i also had to modify some of these ktx2 files as well okay let me try to show you what i'm trying to fix here so this is what lander's website looks like where his face is pretty perfect fit to the center of the screen and currently this is what mine looks like so clearly the rest of my face here is not visible and after looking at the code i realized that this is probably because in the web p file the way that a lot of these assets are loaded they tend to have this alpha a uh, base layer followed by a depth which gives you that 3d effect but i do need to modify all of these other things as well like this roughness a few moments later. 
So I tried a bunch of different things in these next few hours, like trying to fix the texture, but I ended up breaking it a couple of times, like this looks horrible. And then finally what worked was going on Canva and creating a custom shadow, which now looks so much better than what we had before, like my face is not blocked anymore. Then I wanted to fix the helmet colors to match my style, so I used AI to create that for me. But I wasn't entirely happy with how it looked because there were so many McLaren logos. So then I went on Canva, manually went to edit things out that I didn't like, modified all of these different things, and then we ended up with... Ta-da! I think it looks really not bad. Like, there's quite a few things to fix, but let's talk about the positives first. Like, when I hover over the helmet, I'm really happy with the design of the helmet. You see Life of Gorus there. I love the colour. I love the design that we've come up with and also removing all of the logos. So, really happy with that. And as I move my face up and down, the transition's really smooth. And I'm quite proud of that. And also, you're able to view all of my different hair strands, everything. And the background also looks really good. We didn't manage to break the animations in the background. So that's a success in my books. Now, what can be fixed? There's definitely a weird texture on top of my face that you can see as well, both on my nose, the top part of my forehead, and also the neck. I presume this comes from the shadow effect from Lando's beard. And since I don't have a beard, I do need to remove this whole shadow effect. And that's the downside when you copy someone's code instead of building something yourself. As I scroll down, there is another thing that I'm quite proud of, which is this whole effect. And this would fit so well in a portfolio website. And I know the image itself looks dirty. Again, we need to fix that. But if you just think of it conceptually, this was really amazing. So I'm really proud of what we have come up with. And I feel a lot more confident to work on top of this project and modify it to add new things. Oh, it's like dark outside already. I don't know if you can tell how exhausted I am. This is another silly project, but I don't think it was that silly after all because I do feel like I learned new stuff. I learned about new libraries that are used in motion animations as well as 3D effects. And most importantly, thank you so much Chat LLM for sponsoring this video. They have a bunch of models, whether it's text-based models or image models, and they also have their own deep agent. And you get access to all of these models at a very, very low cost price. So definitely check them out in the link in the description box below. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.